Okay, I'm just going to do a quick video, so I'll take about 20 minutes of your time, uh, just doing a very simple funicular polygon uh, and finding the forces in a frame by hand. Okay, so let's start off with the question. All right, we'll have a, a triangle that looks a little bit like this. Okay, and let's say that that's 20 newtons. We've got a reaction force there, a reaction force there. Let's say that's 60 degrees, and let's say that that's 30 degrees. Obviously, we're aware of the internal angles of a triangle, so that would make that a right angle there. Okay, right. So where do we start then? Well, we need to start by drawing our space diagram a little bit more accurately. Yeah. There's our space diagram. So we need to start drawing that a little bit more accurately. So let's start with a straight line. Obviously I'm using a drawing board here, which makes life a little easier. We might have some kicking about, which you can borrow um, next time you're in. Uh, so let's just draw a nice straight line there. Okay, so we're coming up at 60 degrees. So I'm going to just put a mark there. Okay, make sure that that's on. So, just coming up, right, I need to move a bit further along the line, don't I? Let's start over here, then we're out of the way of anything else that we've done. Okay, 60 degrees, there we go. So let's bring in, let's just use the straight edge of the, of the protractor, I think. So we're just going from mark to mark, like that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. That's at 60 degrees, and then I'm just going to draw um, 90 degrees, so I'm just going to make a mark here, so that we know where we're, uh, we're going from. Make sure that my zero is lined up with my line there, and there's our 90 degree line. So again, I'm just going to come down here like this. Just check my marks, and... There we go, just need to make that a little bit longer. Whoops. And we'll extend that line along the bottom there. Okay. So, we've got our triangle, that's our space diagram. So, I'll just very quickly with the ruler, just make that look like it belongs. Okay. Okay, so there's our one. There's our two, and there's our 20 newtons. So that's our space diagram just done very quickly. Okay. So the next step then is our Bose notation. So we start here between our reaction forces, and then we work our way around C, D, and E. And that's just doing the spaces. You can't see that, can you? That's just doing the spaces. Let me just. There we go, we're just doing the spaces there, so obviously that's space A, we've got space B up here, remember we're labelling the spaces with Bell's notation, yeah, space C here, and let's, I don't know why I call that E, I do know my alphabet, A, B, C, D, there we are, all good, excellent, right, so, in order to complete this we need to work out what the reaction forces are and then we need to find the forces in each of these members and we need to say whether each of these members is in compression or tension. So we start by finding the reaction forces. So to do that graphically we need to create a funicular diagram. So how do we do that? We start with what we know. So what we know, the only thing that we know, is this 20 newtons here. So I'm just going to grab a little, uh, little set square here just to check that I'm nice and uh, nice and level, and I'm going to do one centimeter is equal to two newtons. So I'm going to draw a line that's ten centimeters long. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line there. Start that there. And I'm going to finish that there. So that's ten centimeters. Okay, from our mark to our mark, you can just about see the little marks there that I've put. Okay. Right, so that's what we know. Is it a vector yet? No, it is not. So let's put an arrow on to make it a vector and not just a line. 
Right, going from our Bose notation, you'll see the 20 newtons there, separate space B and space C. So we're going clockwise around, we go from B to C. So we go from B, there's B, to C. Oh, we need to make that a lowercase letter, don't we? Yeah, okay. We use lowercase in our force diagram. All right. Right, so we've got our points B and C. So what we do now is we pick an origin point. And our origin point can be over here, it can be over here, it can be over here, it can be over here. It can be anywhere, really. Um, so I'm just going to pick a point over here. Experience has shown that if I pick a point that is sort of down and to the, to the right, then when I'm doing my drawings over this section, my drawings come below my space diagram. And I find that less confusing. Um, if you've done your point over here, then what you'll find is that your lines will come up and through your space diagram, and that's fine. It doesn't matter, but might just be a little more tricky to keep track of. Okay, so I'm now going to draw lines from the start and the end of my vectors uh, to the origin point. Okay, so that's all I'm doing right now. I've picked my origin point. I'm just drawing lines from the start to the end. Okay, so you'll see I just place the pencil and I move the ruler into the pencil to make sure that I get as accurate as I can do. You see, I'm slightly off there on the X even after doing that. Never mind. Right, so now the fun starts. We put the fun in funicular. Uh, so now I need to draw a line parallel to this first line from the start point there. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple of faint construction lines in as well. So they're just faint construction lines and they run can you see that? Yeah, okay, faint construction lines. And they just run in the direction up and down from, from the force lines there. Okay, so some faint construction lines. Okay, right, so first of all, this line here, first line as, as we sort of come, come to this, we draw a parallel line through this point here. So I'm going to use my protractor like this. I'm going to place it on there. I'm going to make sure that my 90 degrees is lined up with my vertical line. And I'm going to measure that and that's 61 to 62 and a half. So let's see if we can manage that. So we come over here. Yeah, you notice I keep my protractor in the same position. So I'm measuring from the same point. I make sure it's level. And then I'm going to come down in the same direction, 61 to, and I'm just going to put a mark there, 62 and a half. Okay. So I'll keep my pencil there. There we go, and I'm just going to bring that line down like that. Okay, so we just extend that construction line. Okay, right, so that's our first point. Okay, just that's our first point. So now we look at our second line here, and we take that parallel line from that, from that point over to our next uh, construction line, the next point where it intersects um, a force line. Okay, so I'm going to line this up here. Again, I'm going to make sure that my 90 degrees lines up with my vertical line, and I'm just going to measure up this time. So that takes me to 10, 19, 19. Okay, so I'll bring that to here. Again, you see, I'm keeping, making sure my protractor is in the same orientation. Yeah, I'm make sure, making sure it's vertical by making sure that that line and the 90 degrees are on the vertical. And what did I say? 19. So 15, 18, 19. There we are. Okay. So I've just done my line there. I'm going to bring that in a little bit longer. There's my first point. There's my second point. And we're going to take that to there like so. Okay, so now we draw a line from the end back to the start, okay? So we draw a line from the end back to the start, okay? So there we go, all the way to the start. And now we take a line parallel to this final line through our origin, okay? So I could measure that from here, or I could measure that from here. I think I'll, I'll measure that from here this time. So again, I'm making sure that my protractor is vertical by making sure the 90s on that construction line. Okay. 
and then looking here that's 10 11 degrees so I move back to here now I've got a bit of a problem here I don't know don't know where my vertical is so I'm going to use the advantage of having the drawing board just to make sure that we stay horizontal okay and what did we say that was 11 degrees so 10 11 just mark that there and then from the origin we take our line through that point okay okay so now what we've discovered is that this is point a okay or whatever letter you've put there between your reaction forces okay so we've got a lowercase a there hopefully you can see let's just make that a bit bigger uh, there so we've got an a now when we look at our space diagram here continuing round clockwise if we go from c over reaction force 2 to a c to a well that's reaction force 2 so going up to here is r2 okay a to b going past reaction force 1 so that means that a to b is reaction force 1 all right so what we do now is we measure that and that gives us the size of our reaction force remember we said it was 2 newtons to a centimeter so let's see what we've got okay let's let's get the ruler out is that a little bit big this one okay so from there to there is 2.5 so we double that and that gives us 5 newtons okay yeah all right so if our entire line is 20 newtons long then the remainder must be 15 newtons okay of course yeah 20 minus 5 is 15 yeah excellent so now we know our reaction forces so let's just go back and, and put that uh, put that on our space diagram just so that we don't get confused uh, equals 15 newtons which is kind of what we'd expect our, our force is uh, closer to reaction force one than it is to reaction force two our load is closer to reaction force one than reaction force two so we'd expect more of the load to be carried by reaction force one there so what do we do next well now we found our reaction forces now we can find out what force is in these members and whether they are in compression or tension so how do we do that well we do more vector diagrams because we can only find out the force and if something's in compression or tension if we know we know two or less things so when we started for example at this corner there were one two three things we didn't know yeah um we could have drove i guess we could have dived straight in at this corner but this is good practice because you won't always be able to to do that with the more complicated examples but there were two things we didn't know so we could have dived in at that corner yeah but it's always good practice to get your reaction forces because that's usually where we start certainly as the examples get more complex um, whereas now at this corner well, we know one thing there are two things we don't know so we can solve that yeah um, okay so let's start so I'm going to number my joints okay I'm going to number the joints and you can do that in whatever order you like you could go one two three one two three whatever it doesn't matter as long as you're then consistent so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on joint number one okay so I'm just going to do a very quick little sketch here so that we can see what's going on at joint number one okay 15 newtons 60 degrees um, do we need to know anything else? We need to know Bose notation, don't we? So we've got A, D, and D. Okay, so that's just to focus my mind on what we're doing, so that we, so I know that I'm not getting confused by anything else that's going on over here. I'm just looking at this one corner. So what do we do? Well, we draw to scale, draw our 15 newtons to scale. So we can draw a line to scale that's 15 newtons. Okay, and I'm just going to show this as an example here okay so we've drawn that to scale okay and then we label that 
well, what do we label it? A to B. So we start at A, we finish at B. Okay. Now, our diagonal line here is B to D. Okay. So that means it must pass through point B and point D. Well, we don't know where point D is, but we know that point B is just there, look. So we can draw our 60 degree line. Yeah, and how would we do that? Well, we'd place our protractor there, we'd measure around 60 to there, then we'd draw the line. Okay, so we draw that line. Our next line, D to A. Well, we don't know where D is, but we know where A is. A is here. So we'd just draw a horizontal line there. And that would be our triangle. Okay, and then we'd follow our arrows round. Okay, the reason I've done that very scrappily is because I'm going to do it properly over here. Because we've already got our 15 newtons to scale. And to be honest, I'm a bit lazy. I can't be bothered drawing it again. So I'm going to continue from this diagram. The advantage of this diagram is I've got, I do less measuring. Yeah. Disadvantage is it can get a little bit confusing as to which direction your forces are going. So you've got to take a little bit more care. Okay, but I'll show you how this is done, and I've shown you how that's done with a with a quick sketch. Okay, obviously if you're doing it this way, which you can do, uh, you'd have to measure uh, the lengths accurately and the angles accurately. So we've got 15 here, so we're going from A to B. So we've gone from A to B. So BD is at 60 degrees. So let's see what that looks like. So again, I'm making sure that we're on the vertical. There's our B. There's uh, 60 degrees yeah we're going 60 degrees like I'm going 60 degrees like that so I'm going 60 degrees like that exactly the same okay so I put my mark there uh, I'm gonna draw a line like this okay let's just extend that I think we'll probably need to right so that's our 60 degrees yeah, just, just put that in there. Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. There we are. So that's 60 degrees, yeah. Just to... Let's just rub that out again, I think. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's our 60 degrees. That's what we've done. Now, our next line over here goes from D to A. We don't know where D is, but we know where A is, and it's a horizontal line. So I'm just going to slide this up, and I'm going to do a horizontal line through point A. Okay, and there's our triangle. So now we measure the size of these lines that we've created. So here we go. So that's looking like that's looking like eight point eight. So let's say that's eight point eight. So that's going to be sixteen, seventeen point six. 17.6 newtons okay and um, we're going to measure this horizontal line over here um, so there we go so that's one two three four point five four point six so four point six would be eight point six nine point two nine point two newtons okay so we found out the size of the force that's the size of our forces because we've measured it and then we've gone back to our scale up here and we've found out the size of our force. So I'm just going to put that over here. So that's 17.6 newtons there and that's 9.2 newtons there. So that's the force in the horizontal and that's the force in that. So now we need to know, is it, is it in compression or tension? So just like we did here, I follow the arrows around. So we go up. So this arrow must be going this way. Let's make it a vector. And this arrow must be going this way. Okay. So we take those arrows and we put them back around the joint. Yeah, so there we are. Putting those arrows back around the joint. So that's going in the same direction there. That's going in the same direction there. Yeah, you can see there and there. Okay. Right, so let's plonk that back on our, our main accurate space diagram. Okay. So there we go. Right, so we must have reaction forces there, and we must have reaction forces there. Okay, so what we've got to remember is that this shows the reaction forces of the beam against the pins. So if the beam is pulling in, the pins must be pushing out, or pulling out, so that means that that's in tension. Okay, so we can say 
tension. Okay, and if the beam's pushing out, well, that means that the reactions of the pins must be pushing in. So that's in compression. Okay, so we now know the size of the force and whether it's in compression or tension. Yeah, so the arrows are just the opposite way to what you'd expect. You'd expect the arrows going out to be in tension, but it's not, it's compression because it's the reaction force in the beam. Okay, right, so we've got one final beam to do. So we could either do joint three or we can do joint two. Um, or both should get us the same answer. I'm going to do joint three. So again, I'm just going to zoom in on joint three. So we've got that at five newtons. We've got that and we've got that. And we said that that was 30 degrees. And our Bose notation is A and D and C. But what else do we know? We also know we've got an arrow going away from the joint. Just there, look, see? Uh, and we know that that is 9.2 newtons. Okay, so again, we could do this to scale. Yeah, we go from C to A, C to A, A to D. So we've got a horizontal line there, and D to C. So again, we get our protractor, it goes through point C, we measure up and clockwise 30 degrees, and we draw a 30 degree line. So that's, that's where is that? That's going to be somewhere out here, isn't it? So let's just put a bit of weight on that so we can see. Obviously, if you're doing this yourself, you do it more accurately. Okay, and then we found point D again there. Okay, and then we can measure that and we can put the arrows on and obviously have run out of space a little bit. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue that over here. Yeah, and we can have a look at this drawing and we can say, well, actually, um, there's point D. Sorry, I didn't label it earlier. I've done point A to D and I've done C A. There's C to A. So the only thing I need to do then is line D to C. So if I've done this drawing accurately, all I need to do is line up those two points. And if I just extend that line a little bit, um, we should be able to measure that. And hopefully, with a bit of luck and a following wind, we'll see that it's at 30 degrees. He says confidently, look at that, slightly off. I'm at 29 degrees. That's just a, an inaccuracy that's crept in in my drawing, but, you know, close enough for government work. Um, so there we are. That's it done. So now we can measure this final line, which comes in uh, five centimetres. So that's going to be 10 newtons there. 10 newtons. Okay. So let's label that on our drawing there. Um, and let's follow our arrows around. So we're going up and we're coming this way. And then we're coming down that way. All right. So we take that back to our space diagram. That's coming down that way. Okay. So that's that there, which means our reaction force is there. And so that is in compression, which is about what we'd expect, I think. Imagine if we were pushing down on these two pencils. Uh, as we push down, they'd move apart, yeah, but because we have a beam at the bottom, the beam, at, the beam at the bottom holds them in place, and so we're squashing those, but the beam at the bottom is stopping them pulling apart at the end, and so is in tension. Okay, and that is how we do that. Thank you very much.